Therefore, it is a custom among Chabad Hasidim that each year when they study this discourse on the yard site of the previous Rebbe, the Tenth of Shvat, they focus on another chapter. The first year, 1951, the first yard site they focused on chapter 1. 1969, chapter 19. 1970, they finished the first cycle, 20 chapters. In 1971, they resumed again the cycle. And the Rebbe, the successor of his father-in-law, each year at the Yud Shvat gathering would give a discourse, Bossi Lagani, and would focus on one chapter of the 20 chapters of the discourse, explaining it, elaborating on it, and revealing new layers of depth in that particular chapter. Today we're in the midst of the third cycle. And this year, 2009, 5769, we study chapter 19, actually the second to the last chapter of this long discourse of Bossi Ligani, which as I discussed in the beginning of the evening, was the discourse the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe published for the yard site of his grandmother for the 10th of Shvat, 1950, ultimately the day when he would pass away. One of the points that the Rebbe makes in this 19th chapter is a concept known in Hebrew as bizbuz ha'etzrus, the squandering of the treasures, explaining that often a king amasses enormous amounts of priceless treasures that have been given to him from earlier generations, sometimes for hundreds of years, the king's treasury contains priceless treasures that one can't even estimate. They have been there for generations. He barely ever shows it to anybody. Maybe at the wedding of a child. Maybe when the best friend comes to visit him. And even then he will not show everything and certainly not squander it and give it up. There is an exception at a time of war. At a time of war, when the king is engaged in a war for his very life, for his very empire, for his very country, at such a time, the king will enter into his treasury and take out every single priceless gem that is there and use it for the sake of victory. Explaining that victory is one of the deepest drives in the human soul. It is one of the most essential qualities in the human soul, the need to win. When confronting an enemy, any type of enemy, the need to win, it brings out what's called midas hanetzach, the quality of victory, in the deepest place. And the Rebbe uses this as a metaphor to describe the war of the Jewish people defined as the army of God, to bring goodness to the world, to saturate the world with godliness, that for this war, for this battle, God would give them, gives them the deepest treasures that are usually not exposed, the highest, deepest levels. The most intimate aspects of God himself are given to the soldiers on the front. 
He may give them through the generals and commanders, but the objective is the infantry, the soldiers on the front who actually carry out the battle and bring victory. These are the ordinary human beings who wake up each morning and battle. They battle the evil within themselves. They battle the narcissism and the selfishness within themselves. And they battle the evil and the negativity within the world around them. And at a time of war, the king is ready to squander all of these treasures. It has been suggested that this concept, perhaps, can be explained a bit clearer by a fascinating story that's recorded in the Midrash. One of the mysteries of Jewish history is King David builds Jerusalem. King David is a great warrior. King David reunites the land and the Jewish kingdom. King David amasses all of the wealth to build a temple, to build a Beit HaMikdash, a permanent structure for God in Jerusalem. But he never ends up doing it. Why not? He has the blueprints, he writes the plans, he has all the material, the merchandise and the money prepared, but he does not end up doing it. He says clearly in the book of Chronicles, Chronicles 1, chapter 22, me in my poverty, Hashem, I prepared for God's house. Enormous quantities of gold and of silver and endless quantities of copper and iron. But he never ended up building the temple. His son, Shlomo, Solomon, would build the temple. Why? There's a Midrash, Yalkut Shimoni in Rus, in the book of Rus. The book of Ruth gives us this explanation. David says, in my poverty, I prepared for the house of God all of this wealth. What does he mean by my, in my poverty? If he was so poor, how did, how did he amass so much wealth? It's like the, the teacher who once said, if I would be Rothschild, I would be richer than Rothschild. Why? <laughs> because I wouldn't stop teaching. <laughs> so in addition to Rothschild's money, I would also have the money I get from teaching. <laughs> David calls himself poor, and yet he has so much wealth. So the Midrash in Yalkut Shemoni says this, the day that David killed Goliath, he shlichu olav b'nois Yisrael kol ha'kesev azov. Jewish women, Jewish girls, to pay tribute to David's extraordinary victory, ridding the world and the Jews from Goliath, from the giant Goliath. They threw all of their gold and silver on David. He took all of the money and he donated it and put it aside to build one day a Beis HaMikdash, to build one day a home for God on the mountaintop in Jerusalem. This was still the time of King Saul. David was not the king. Years would pass, and this treasure would grow and grow. And it was an enormous treasure. And the Midrash says it came from the money, what? the silver and gold of the girls hurled upon David after he killed Goliath. In the midst of David's kingdom, there was a hunger. Three years in the Holy Land, a terrible famine. The Jewish people came to David and said, you have stored away so much gold and silver from the days of Goliath. Give it to us. Let us feed the hungry. David did not want it. He refused. He said, this money is dedicated, it's consecrated to build God's home. I'm not going to take this money and use it for the present famine. Let's find other solutions for the famine. Interestingly, the Yonis and Eipschitz, in this book, Yoharis Dvash, Jerush Beis, connects this medrash to the famous Gemari and Brachas, where David advised the sages to go to war in order to provide for the welfare and the, the food, the, for the welfare and nutrition of the Jewish people. And he says, because he didn't want to give this money. Amar Baruch Hu God told him, 
like he balta alecha lahachias by nefoshes chayecha she'ein hamikdash nivna al yadcha. Since you did not take this money and use it to vitalize souls, I swear to you, the temple will not be built through you. It will be built through Solomon. And Rabbi Yonis and Eifshitz explains that this is the meaning of the prophet who tells King David, why didn't David build the temple because you spilled much blood because of all of your wars? Rabbi Yonis says it's not the wars he fought for survival of the Jewish people and for the land of Israel. You can't blame him for those wars. It's the wars that were fought in order to provide for their economy because he didn't want to use this money. And that's how Rabbi Yonis and Eifshitz explains this message. 